Good day, this is Michael Atman with Iconesis, and today we'll be doing a real-time workflow video communicating 360 product photography using Lightroom uh, and the tethered capture uh, when working with an Iconesis 360 turntable. So let's get started. The first thing that we'll do is we're going to start a, a new tethered capture session. So I'll click that, and we can go ahead in here and kind of define all our parameters. I'll just hit OK. And we're going to see that it finds our camera here. We're working with a Canon Rebel T6 camera and a 50 millimeter lens. We're also working with the Iconesis Silver mid-series turntable. Um, I should preface this just by letting you know that I did go ahead and do my image composition that is adjust my aperture shutter white balance ISO, um, set a custom white balance. I did that all directly on camera um, just because Lightroom doesn't have a live view. So we'll just do a pre-snap here and we'll take a look at the result that we have. You'll see that we're shooting a handbag on a, on a uh, again, on a turntable here. So that's looking pretty good there. Um, we might be a tad bit overexposed, so I'm just going to speed up my shutter one stop. We'll take a second capture here. And there we go. That's looking pretty good for color accuracy. Um, the next thing that I can see here is our handbag's not quite straight on. So I'm going to go ahead and probably turn our turntable. I'm going to open up our 360 turntable controller software and I'm going to turn the turntable five degrees. So I'm just going to enter five and then hit this button here um, just to rotate the turntable. I actually hit it twice um, just to move it 10 degrees and we're going to take another picture here. And we can see that looks better now that we're basically shooting straight on onto the uh, the handbag. So we've kind of got our image composition part down here. Everything looks good. Let me just move this. Now what we're going to want to do is move into our develop settings. Um, I'm not a Lightroom user myself. Um, so those who are f more familiar with the program will probably have better insight into the features and functionality. I'll just do a couple things here. I'm going to apply a couple presets here. Um, we'll just take a look. High contrast and detail. We'll stick with that. And probably the next thing that we'll do, we could do histogram and levels. Um, when I use my screen capture software, that actually times it out. So I won't actually do that. I'm just going to go into my crop and pre-crop this. That looks pretty good there. So let's just go ahead with this for the kind of processing. We won't again dive into it too much, but just note that there is a lot of raw processing tools inside of here. Now what we're going to do is our develop settings, we're going to use same as previous, and that will automatically apply um, whatever edits that we've applied to these raw images that we're capturing immediately after capture. So we'll go back into the library, and we're just going to remember that we shot three images here because we won't export these as part of our 360 image set. Um, when we're getting to the final step. So let's move on to our next step. That's going to be we're going to connect our uh, our camera via shutter release. That's going to be from the turntable directly into the camera and the turntable will trigger the camera at each angle. Now our next step we're going to open up the 360 turntable controller software and let's dive into a couple uh, just we'll quickly do a run through crash course in this UI. First and foremost in advanced settings what we're going to see here is uh, the really only thing that users will need to enable is trigger shutter release before turntable turns. Um, also note you can hit this shutter release button and that will automatically trigger the camera and upload an image directly in here if you did want to do a test shot that way. Just to connect, uh, test the uh, shutter release connection. Under basic settings um, we're going to see turntable movement. This slide bar right here, rotation speed. Um, we'll give you 10 different speed options. Um, at the fastest speed you're going to capture about 36 frames in about uh, 60 seconds so it is very fast. Uh, I'm going to slow it down just a tad. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is add a capture delay. Now this is pretty important. Lightroom is not the fastest kind of raw conversion software that uh, I've worked with. Um, so what we want to do is give it time after capture to um, obviously transfer the image to the PC and then convert that raw file. So I'm going to add a delay so it'll be turn stop wait five seconds as denoted here and then capture. The next thing we're going to want lock table one idle. That will just ensure for turntable precision and accuracy. We always suggest to use that. 
uh, with that feature enabled. Um, the turntables have an accuracy of about 0 0.03 degrees, so they are very precise. Um, frames count, that's going to be the number of frames that you shoot per 360 rotation. We've got a bunch of predefined values here. Uh, just note, under custom, you can enter any value you decide um, up to uh, about 8,000. Um, in some cases, up to about 12,000 frames with some of our turntables. And then the last thing here, we don't, again, have a live view through the software, but it would be beneficial to hit play and kind of pre-rotate the turntable just to ensure that we position our object in the center of the turntable. That's something that we do suggest while the camera live view is enabled. Watch on the live view on the back of the camera and do a pre-rotate again to ensure that the object is spinning on axis. Now, when we're ready to get started shooting, we're just going to hit this start button, and that will automate the workflow in a turn, stop, snap workflow. Again, after the stop, it's going to wait five seconds and then capture. A 360 image capture. We can go ahead and inspect any one of these images and or take a look at the set of images in the library. Um, everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to batch select all of these and we're going to go ahead and export these. Let me just make sure I've selected all. Looks good. We're going to go into the export dialog here where we can rename, resize, give a watermark, choose the output location, uh, rename. Um, lots of different options inside of here that I won't really dive into. I'll just hit the export button. And that process is now complete. So let's go ahead and open up that folder. And again, we can see our set of 36 images here. Uh, and a final step would be um, to compose these into a 360 product view. Uh, let me go ahead and open up our 360 view creator software. We do develop a proprietary software that allows users to compose these image sets into interactive 360 product views. Pretty straightforward. I will batch select these images, drag and drop. And it will take those images and put it into, obviously, as we can see here, an interactive 360 file that includes mouse control, click and drag, play, pause, left, right, and zoom in, zoom out buttons. There's also additional button options like view full screen. Uh, outputs can be an interactive HTML5. That's what we're seeing here. There's also an interactive MP4 that uh, it's about 50% to 75% smaller file size than the HTML5. We also support animated GIF, which is great for social media channels, as well as standard MP4 video. Um, again, these are fully customizable. You can choose the spin rate at which these uh, 360 views will turn when they're in the autoplay. Um, users can also choose from multiple different button options and or upload their own buttons. Uh, that would be the player buttons. Choose different colors, any RGB color. Choose the button locations. Um, I won't dive into this too much, um, but we do have a great video that kind of shows everything, including the ability to add hotspots. So let's just discuss kind of our output here. Um, output can be local. That is output locally to a desktop or networked folder. And with that output um, local, you can then go and upload to your own server and then embed these 360 files into your website fairly easily. And the other option is upload directly to our 360 view server. Um, and that will just take this file, put it directly on our own server, and then give you a link where you can easily embed into your website. If you have any questions, the name is Iconosys. We thank you for your time.